Welcome back. In this video, we're going to consider the very important topic of human rights. We see them all around us, popular in the news media, but what are the agreed philosophical foundations for human rights, if there are any? And what are some of the critiques of human rights, if there are any of those? I hope you enjoy it. Now, one of the things about what might protect free will and the choices that we make is a theory about human agency. Do we actually have the protections we need in place uh, to be free individuals. So whether we have free choice or not, we do have a certain amount of agency over what we, how we like to organize our lives and where we like to go on planet Earth. There are people over the years who have been very worried about uh, the inability of individuals in the world to have, quote unquote, agency. In fact, there's a great political theorist named Michael Ignatieff has a theory of human rights that they're actually something that protects our agency. And I was thinking about this idea of choices and agency that Ignatieff had um, developed and how that relates to modern human rights as we understand them. One of the problems is if you do a deep reading in human rights, you realize that no agreed philosophical foundations for their existence. So there's no real justification for their existence. And those people who seek to understand rights often look at the international law of human rights, which articulate those rights in a variety of treaties and agreements and statements and declarations, which are then enacted within domestic legal systems. And here in the United Kingdom, there's a debate as to the uh, value of the Human Rights Act itself and whether we should get rid of that Human Rights Act or not, replace it with a Bill of Rights, etc. And what's the role of the United Kingdom within the Council of Europe and its relationship to the European Convention of Human Rights. But where do these ideas come from? Well, the story from philosophy can be contradictory. One appeal to the existence of rights comes from Aquinas, who argued that rights come from God. Because we are creatures of God, we therefore have rights. So the Aquinas and the Aquinian tradition suggests that maybe rights exist in God. Secondly, there's the natural rights argument that within the natural order of things, humans have inherent rights and possess those rights. So we can make an appeal to God or nature. Thirdly, we could say rights come from reason. This is the Kantian perspective. And he has this thing he calls deontological philosophy. That's a big word for basically saying, what are the sorts of things that we can, by reason alone, agree on? Like torture is wrong. It's very difficult to find a mathematical equation that understands that, right? It's just torture is wrong, and one has to apply reason alone to suggest that that is wrong. Now, there's some critics, of course, of human rights. One of the first critics was Jeremy Bentham, who said that human rights are nothing more than nonsense upon stilts, high ideas but not grounded, not real, and not useful. And, of course, we have to return to Karl Marx again, who had a theory of rights in which he said human rights were just there to protect the interests of the bourgeoisie, property rights, civil rights around privacy and correspondence in the home, etc., were only just there for propertied people and the bourgeoisie. So we have an array of philosophies in defense of rights or critical of rights. And here I need Charlie to help me. He's going to be my great adjudicator. So Charlie, if you could stand here, that'd be very helpful. Here would be good. Um, I'm going to give you three envelopes. Okay. And we'll have three volunteers who will come up. And they will select one of our philosophers, place it in an envelope, and return to their seat. Does that make sense? Yep. And since you're a genius at math, you'll realize that if only three people do that, there'll be two placards left. One for me, one for you? Uh, no, actually, we're going to put them face down on the table so I can't see them. Does that make sense? Yep. So you're the envelope guy. All right, you're in charge of the envelopes. I'm going to stand over here because I don't want to witness what happens. And I'm going to choose people to go up and select a philosopher. Could you select a philosopher, please? What's your name? Lydia. Lydia. Off you go. Okay, I'm going to close my eyes here. Can't see a thing. Back to Lydia as she makes her choice. Lydia, choose any one of those philosophers. Take an envelope from Charlie. Put the placard in the envelope and then return to your seat. Yes, please. Okay, so you have one chosen in an envelope. 
Please take a seat. Excellent. Hello. Would you like to make a choice, please? What is your name? Jesse. Jesse. So we have Lydia and Jesse. Now, Jesse is going to make her way up to the philosophers and make a selection. Place it in the envelope. Excellent. And now your placard is obscured, and I have no idea what you've chosen. Fantastic. Now, I'd like one more, please. So I don't want to look at the uh, placards. Could you uh, be our third person? Yes, and your name is? Ella. Ella. Great. So Lydia, Jesse, and Ella. And once they've made their choices, Charlie, you know what to do. You take the remaining placards and place them face down on the table. Charlie, you may have a seat. You are seated. Excellent. So, placards down, everything obscured. I want you to think about the philosophers you've chosen. Were you particularly influenced by them, or was it more kind of process of elimination? Um, I felt a bit bad for them. You felt a bit bad for them. Good. Okay, that's a good motivation. And you? Um, random. Random. Good. And what do you study here? Engineering. engineering. Okay, you have to do a little lot of randomness in engineering, don't you? You want that bridge to be, you know, to stay in the wind. There's a lot of random forces on a bridge, right? So that's the sort of thing I want you to. You you do built environment, is that right? No, design engineering. Design engineering. Well, hmm. <coughs> okay. And what was your motivation? Random. Pretty much random. Okay, let's see what happened to random. Could you stand, please? Have you ever had your mind read? I don't think so. No. You don't think so? Okay, just hold your placard like that. That's fantastic. Okay, out from the body. Great. And, and I just, just want you to relax, okay? That's great. Well done. Okay, concentrate on the philosopher. Okay, that's very good. So we talked about God, nature, reason, nonsense upon stilts, and the bourgeois philosophies. You were influenced most heavily, whether randomly or otherwise, as an engineer, in the application of reason, and you chose Mr. Kant. Am I correct? So, yeah. All right, so empirical verification, Kant. Thank you very much. Right. <laughs> Secondly, that was Lydia, now it's Jess's turn. Have you ever had your mind read? Probably not. Probably <laughs> not. Okay, relax, doesn't hurt, okay? You're like a tin soldier. All right, here we go. <laughs> All right, very good. Concentrate on your philosopher. That's great. All right, and what are you studying? Psychology. Psychology. Did that have any influence on your choices? Probably not. Okay, very interesting. Um, it was a natural selection. Yes, it was Locke and nature. And if we see, ladies and gentlemen, Locke and nature. All right. And finally, could be one of three, because there are two up there, two chosen. Right, you ready? Yep. Okay, direct access to your mind. Just hold like that's great. Fine. Thank you very much. Okay, concentrate very hard. You felt sorry for them. Yeah, I felt, you like felt I was sorry. Away. <laughs> you were giving it away. Not necessarily. If I had said, "Oh, I feel sorry for the philosopher," who would you choose? But <laughs> you did choose Karl Marx, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> well done, ladies and gentlemen. Three philosophers. Thank you very much, Karl Marx. All right. So I hope you enjoyed that. It's interesting when people end up with Karl Marx, whether they chose it or not. But I somehow knew which one that she chose. So in our next video, we're going to consider the science of deduction. How do we take information about the world that we know to say something about the world we do not yet know? Stay tuned.